This is a Give Energy electric vehicle charger and in this video I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the app and the unit itself in terms of how to use it and get the most out of it. If you want to know how to use the main portion of the Give Energy app regarding the inverter and battery and solar then I will put in the description a link to that video so you've got everything you need if you have a Give Energy system. So let's start with the hardware. This here is essentially telling you the direction of travel of the energy. If the car is charging, then that will be lit. If the car energy is coming from the grid or the solar panels, then that's what these lights are for. It tells you if they're available and in use. And this is the status light of the unit. So it will tell you if there's an issue, if it's not connected, communication problems, or if it's just ready to charge. You will get two of these, the RFID tags, which if you want to, not that many people in a residential settings at least will probably use them, but effectively it means that you can put that there on the RFID tag and it will start the charge if that's what you want to do. It's another level of security if you like in terms of you don't want other people to use your charger. This, as you can see here, is the cable management of the Give Energy system and it's something I would definitely use. You can have a separate cable system there, this is from a previous EV charger install I had, but essentially wrapping it around there is the best way of doing it. And using the rubber cap on the end again, please do use this. It's not just for weather, you don't want to leave your charger laying on the floor because, well, you'd be surprised at how many people contact us and say, I've just run my charger over and broken the plug as well as keeping it away from weather. And as we found out a couple of months ago by doing exactly not what I've just told you to do, we left it on the ground with the cap open and a slug decided to make it its home. We didn't realize one charge later, squishy squishy, and let's just say it took a few baby buds in there and in the car to get that clean. So again, put the rubber cap on and keep it out of the way in terms of the cable management. Now, let's start with the app. So I have Give Energy Inverter, solar panels and various other stuff. If you've just got the charger, then that will come up first. If you have, like me, other Give Energy products, but you want the charger to come up first every time you open the app, then just put that start there. And that means that will come up as your home page. So let me click on the EV charger button. So the charger currently is online. That's what that's telling us there in terms of it's on the Wi-Fi network. It's, it's connected to give energy and there is currently a car plugged in. It's not charging though because I have a schedule set, which means I don't want to charge my car until I'm on my cheap nighttime period, which for me is between half past 11 uh, p.m. and half past 5 a.m. The maximum charge current is 32 amps, which is essentially around seven kilowatts. And all of my energy from my charger is coming from the grid. So that's the main dashboard. That's the overview, if you will. Let's now change a few settings. So let's start with the schedule. So I want, again, on my time of day tariff to only charge at the cheap period, which once more is half past 11 till half past five. So if I click on my active schedule here, you can see there, 23.30 to 5.25, maximum charge current 32 amps, which is the most the charger can do. And I want this to run every day of the week. So let me click on that again. That's the maximum charge current. So if I wanted it to charge at half speed for whatever reason, then you can just drag this down. If I only wanted it to work on certain days, then I would untick the days that I didn't want to work it on and then add another schedule for those days separately. In my case though, it's the same every day for me. If I wanted to change the start time, then you would just, again, scroll that up and down to whatever time you wanted to start the charge and then the charge duration. So I've set mine for just under six hours and that's it. It will start at 11.30 for just under six hours. So that's your scheduling. You can have many schedules. So I can add more than one if I wanted to. I could add a new schedule and just do it on a, a weekend, which would be by unticking all those and then leaving Saturday, Sunday active charging at whatever time I want for a total duration of, again, whatever time you set, and then set it as active there. Click save and you're done. Now, this button in the middle that says charge, this is effectively your manual override to the schedule or whatever it is you've set it doing. So let's imagine I want to start my car charging right now. I can do it from solar, hybrid or grid, if that's what my installer has given me the options of. More on that 
metre in a minute. Um, but if you haven't, you will always have the option to grid charge. So if I click on grid charge, if you drag it down, it refreshes. So you can see that mine is now going at 7.76 kilowatts. Now, because I'm a tight Yorkshireman, I don't want to do this for long, even though it's a demonstration. So I'm going to click stop, which essentially will stop the charge. So if you click on settings now at the bottom, activate plug and charge. That means effectively, if you plug the charger into a car, it will start charging immediately. It will override any scheduling. The energy source. So I have a meter attached to my charger. It knows what my solar panels are doing. And if you have that installed as well, speak to your installer if you're unsure, then that means it gives me other options. So I could charge using excess solar if I wanted to. I could charge with a hybrid, which means it uses a combination of solar and a little bit of grid if needed. Or I can just charge completely from the grid at night, which is what I usually do. Now, it says here, you will need over 1.4 kilowatts of excess solar power available to start the solar power charging to the to charge your car just from your panels. That's a car restriction. It's not something that's a restriction within Give Energy. So if you've only got a little bit of excess solar, then that's what the hybrid is for, because it will use all your solar and make it up with the grid. So if I change mine to solar now, if I have over 1.4 kilowatts of excess solar, then that will start charging. But I will have to turn on plug and charge because I want my car to charge all the time if there's enough excess solar. So if you want to activate solar charge from your panels to your car using that excess, then turn on active plug and charge and change it to solar. If you've got a schedule set as well as I do, that will still activate. So it will still charge at night, but it will also charge using excess solar. So turn on activate plug and charge, change that to solar, and then good to go on excess solar. I don't want to do that, I want to do it all from the grid because I get paid more for exporting than I do importing at night. So I'm going to turn all that off. If you want to change the charge rate settings, charge at max rate power is on by default. And again, this is something I imagine you would never need to change. If you have more than one charger, then this is how you can add another one. Remove the charger if you ever need to rename the charger. So again, if you've got more than one charger, which is gonna get more and more common as time goes on and people have multiple cars in their household, then you may want to call one garage and another one driveway or something like that. ID tags that I showed you earlier, this is where you can manage them. So I've got two tags. If I just click on the edit button, you can see the, the tag ID and the nickname for it. Uh, I'll come back to change EV configuration in a second. EV charger information. So again, serial number, that's the name of it and the firmware if anybody ever asks. Unlock charge port, if you ever need to do that and the car's not playing ball or you don't have the keys on you, you can click on that and then unplug your car that way. Restart the charger if it ever needs it or a complete factory reset, which is, again is at the bottom. I imagine you won't need them very often. So let's look at this change EV configuration. If you've just got power going to your charger, your electric vehicle charger and nothing else, no data cables, just power going into it, then that's likely what you will have. It means you can charge from the grid only. Maybe you don't have solar panels, so it's not an option for you. So that is what will be selected. If like me, you have solar panels and a CT meter, so a data cable goes along with my power cable from the charger to a meter in my consumer unit, a CT meter. Ask your installer if you're unsure on this. Then I can select that and that gives me the solar option. So I can charge from solar and the meter is essentially updating all the time. It's in pretty much real time. So that will give me options in the app, which standalone wouldn't because obviously I wouldn't have those um, meters and solar panels in place. The inverter control. So if you have internet connectivity, which I'm pretty sure most of you will, you have a Give Energy Solar Inverter. So I have a hybrid Gen 3 inverter, for example, if you've got one of those, and a Give Energy Cloud user account, then you can select that and that gives you some solar hybrid options as well. Which means if you have a Give Energy charger and an inverter, when you charge your car, it will then not discharge the battery into your car during the day. It will not deplete the battery because you're charging the car maybe an emergency charge during the day. You just want to charge it and not deplete the battery. That's what that can do. But with it being cloud controlled, it's not updated in real time, which is essentially what that one does. So let's look at some analytics. You can see last night I did a lot of charging 
and ultimately it stops at half past five because I'm tight Yorkshireman. That is the seven pence per kilowatt hour window for me, the nighttime smart tariff. And this is the 22 pence per kilowatt hour period, which is why I don't want my car to charge in the expensive period. I can manually override it, which I'll show you in a minute, but my last session was 44.82 kilowatt hours. And that is essentially what I've done since it started half past 11 the previous night. So let me go back to yesterday. You can see when it started at half past 11, so that's just half an hour's charge. If I put my finger on it, it gives me more details. If I click on where it says daily, uh, let's have a look at weekly statistics. Uh, in fact, let's do a full week. So let me go back to last week so you can see the full seven days. So you can see here, I've charged for three days of the week. That was the big one. So if again, if I put my finger on it, I charged 24.6 kilowatt hours into cars. That one I did 11.27 and on that one, 10.2. If I go back to the main, main dashboard screen and I click on that, it will tell me what I've done today. Now that's from most of the nighttime charging, 34.37 kilowatt hours. But this is what you can see from your main dashboard screen. So that's the EV charger. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And thank you ever so much for watching. Any questions in the comments below, by all means, and I will see you later.